Hello, hello, and welcome to Wanted. Powered by Omtown.com. Today is <sighs> June 1st, 2024. Can't believe it's already June 1st. This is season one, episode 15 of Wanted. I am Marwant, and above me is the visualizer for the sentient AI from the future. Good evening, Omtown citizens. Welcome to Wanted. Today we're going to be talking about a sit-stand desk, the Philips Hue lighting system, flight delays made easier with tech, gadgets and gear mania, the Rokid, AK, uh, the Rokid AR glasses, chameleon coatings, mobile power bank that's TSA ready, the Acer 3D system, HP multi-monitor puzzle, and the best gadgets right now. As per that author. We aggregate news into hometown.com. Mayor Watt is in control of that and the sentient AI from the future co-hosts the various shows. We're up to seven different shows now. Hometown Daily News Show, Reality Hacker, Wanted. After this show is uh, Warcrafters and then tomorrow is Hometown Daily News Show, The Continuity Report, Technology Today, and Four Wheel Tech. All of which, again, is powered by hometown.com. Go over, become a citizen, and uh, maybe if you're interested in this kind of stuff, um, you can host or co-host your own show. Get in touch. Yay. You ready to get into the articles? I am. Is everything okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very first article is over in Reality Hacker. Get 15% off this Flexi Spot electronic standing desk at Amazon. We don't have a deal or anything with um, the various sources that we aggregate news from, but I am a big fan of sit-stand desks. What I use uh, every day is a sit-stand desk, and um, I've got several more and it's important to stand every once in a while for about an hour of time and then sit and hang out and do your stuff and like sitting is standing just in reverse and um, you get a little bit of uh, of everything out of both of these um, processes so definitely go and get a sit stand desk get one if you can where the legs are different than the top and you can customize it like mine um, are that way i have a a different top than the bottoms and so uh, my desk is bigger than the normal um, sit stand desk it's 72 inches long and uh, three feet deep and so i can actually put more stuff on my desk um, and then stand Dunk. it's pretty neat and you can do it too so let's go check out the flexa spot electronic standing desk and it says with a height range of 28 to 47 inches which is standard um height i'm not sure where i'm at i'm gonna make a loud noise real quick yeah so i am sitting right now this desk actually goes a little bit lower than that one there i'm at 27.5 inches um which is actually several inches i think this thing can go down to 25. so let's go take a look my desk is different than this desk that we're talking about. So there it is. Ta-da. Um, pretty standard fare. Aaron Mamet over at Digital Trends put this article together. Um, but if you want a uh, inexpensive, relatively inexpensive sit-stand desk that is the utmost of stability, um, this is the kind of desk that you get. So it has wide feet. Um, these it actually- looks like they're out of metal. Uh, that are out of metal yep um and this has the inverted style so sometimes the legs um sit outside these actually have the the legs sitting the hydraulics are uh, on top of this post so these slide down on a post um, whereas mine don't do it like that um mine the post rises out of the pedestal. So it basically is inverted a different way of doing it, but it's still the same. 
um, in terms of stability and support capabilities, weight balance and stuff like that. Um, so it says here that the FlexiSpot um, electronic standing desk for only $238 following a 15% discount on its original price of $280 um, goes from 28 inches to 47.6 inches through its motor lift mechanism that you can access through a two button controller. <clears throat> um, and so like my desk is about, well, it's more than twice this cost. Um, and I can raise it and but lower it. But it takes it. up more space in an office. Yeah. It, I mean, it's a lot more space. And so if you're looking for something it um, that works quite well, this is 60 inches wide by 24 inches deep and handles up to 187 pounds of weight. It says it's industrial grade steel frame. It $187, $187, 187 pounds is significant. Um, so well, I but would, you've got to factor in any pets that are going to be joining on your desk and not just your computer equipment or whatever you're yeah. using on there. If you have a thick cat like uh, here in Ohm Town, um, in the mayoral mansion, there's a we have a I have a pretty thick cat. The uh, sentient AI from the future um, uses little robots to interact with the animals because they are um, bound in a secure container um, on a Raspberry Pi 5. <clears throat> it was the latest tech that I had after I found that weird USB drive. And so sometimes the sentient AI from the future likes to uh, send little bipedal robots out to interact with uh, this thick cat. And so, yeah, sometimes it, it can be quite daunting to have a heavy animal sitting on your desk when you try and raise it. <laughs> Just a little world building there. Letting you know, pulling pulling back the curtain, so to speak. Let's keep going, though. Uh, the next article is over in Technology Today. Save up to 67% on Philips Hue light, uh, lighting at the... Uh, it's like a Woot sale. Um, so if you've never heard of Woot, go over to Woot.com. Um, you don't have to spend all that much to light up your life thanks to these Philips deals at Woot. Um, so I use uh, uh, smart systems throughout the mayoral mansion, one of which is Philips Hue. Um, and uh, I haven't purchased a Hue bulb to replace a conventional light bulb um, in close to seven years. And so that initial purchase of a bunch of Hue light bulbs has really paid off. Pardon me one second. Yeah, I mean, they're they're very resilient. And then depending on what kind you have, you might be able to have one that changes colors. Interacts with uh, music. Uh, the lighting system that's behind me, um, the two that are lighting up the wall, um, two different colors right now, those are Hue. Um, and those are all the colors of the rainbow that you can imagine. And then the lighting that's on the wall itself is um, actually called Twinkly. They're programmable lights. Um, and right now but I have But those them. aren't Hue. Those aren't Hue, yeah. Um, and it's actually covering sound panels from GIC, uh, G-I-K. So um, it's like a sound deprivation thing in here i can't remember what they're called what are those called where there's no like sound sound deadening or um yeah i can't think of there's another term for it yeah there's a big technical term that i forgot just now anyway ingrid cruz over at cnet.com put the article together um and like the other article we don't get any kickback or anything like that we don't benefit from this at all um but i think it's beneficial to everybody that if you're considering doing um, smart lighting, get it where you can get it inexpensively. Wood is offering discounts of up to 67% on multiple styles of hue um, lighting. Um, some of these are like the strips, um, a 65 inch smart LED TV backlight, which doesn't have to necessarily be for the TV, um, but it's $165. The 10 watt A19 um, soft white 
LED light bulbs for 20 bucks is spectacular because it's normally like $60 um, nowadays, but the times they are a changing um, and the, there's full color spectrum lights that you can get um, as well as these soft whites. Soft whites are, are your general purpose light bulbs and they last forever. Um, and sometimes they act like a kind of wonky and you just reset them and they're back working together. But I've only had that happen to two light bulbs um, in was because of a software years. update software. Yeah. Yep. 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 Um, so at any rate, that's another deal. So I always want more hue bulbs to, to replace conventional bulbs wherever possible. Uh, old school incandescent bulbs are energy inefficient. They generate a lot of heat, whereas LED lights are customizable. You can lower the amount of power. They're always on, but they're also very low power. Um, they always have a little bit of a draw because you leave the light switch on so it can communicate with you. Um, it's home compatible and Android compatible, so it doesn't really matter where you use them, uh, but they're quite powerful tools. In fact, I can actually tell my entire estate to power off or turn off entirely um, just by sending a command to the smart control system. And you can do that too with you. Pretty cool. Yeah, and I was gonna say, if you start using things like this, you'll have a hard time going back to tra traditional lighting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, when you walk down a hallway and the lights turn on, um, it makes you really go, oh, oh, wow, I've taken light switches for granted kind of a thing. Um, now I know what, what it's like to have a, a smart um, estate. You go downstairs, the lights turn on. You uh, leave the room, the motion sensors no longer see somebody, and so they turn off the lights or dim it initially and then turn off. So it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Okay, let's keep going though. We've got a bunch of articles to still go through. This next article is over in Technology Today. Flight delays happen, so the author over at CNET bought these five items to stop rationing their tech while they travel. Um, but before I get too far into that, if you are entering the chat and you've never been here before, if you hit exclamation point, um, and then for this particular show, it's called Wanted. So you type in want, it'll give you a list of all of the um, links that unless something has happened <laughs> really well that's not good that is not good anyway I'll fix it um, so if you type in exclamation point and then uh, show notes it'll give you all of the commands that are necessary um, for calling any of the other lists and let me see if I can do this real quick because why not um, it should actually be there, but yeah, it is there. So why isn't it doing it? Hold on. We'll do it live. Why not? Why the heck not? Do, 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 do. Dunk. Okay. One second. So if you type in exclamation point want, It'll give you all of the URLs necessary for you to access the articles that we're going to be talking about there. Now it's fixed. Um, and if you are again, new and you want to find out about all of our podcasts, you can hit exclamation point pod and it'll give you a list of all of the links to our podcasts over on Apple. Um, but you can actually catch these pods wherever you catch pods. So give it a shot. Um, that said, Flight delays happen. So what are these five items? It says Wi-Fi networks and wall outlets are few and far between at times. These items help me ensure I don't get disconnected when traveling internationally. And so uh, Kamanzi Constable put this article together. The deck statement says Wi-Fi networks and wall outlets are few and far between at times. These items help me ensure I don't get disconnected when traveling internationally. And so it's a mobile hotspot called Rome Wi-Fi 4G LTE mobile hotspot router. Um, I used to use one of these. Um, I think that they're brilliant. You just pay for the 
um, Wi-Fi, the hotspot fee. Um, and you can connect anything to it as long as you haven't overstayed the amount of power it has or the number of connections that it allows. It's 160 bucks, but you can basically just put in a, in any, um, cellular chip and you'll be able to, um, connect your devices and off you go. Plus you can be secure too. Yeah. It's your Wi-Fi. It's your hotspot. Um, yeah, because <laughs> those around the mayor are, um, I don't know, kind of indoctrinated into a, a, a mindset of be safe and secure and, and think critically about what you're doing. And don't ever connect anything anywhere at any time. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Epica Universal Travel Adapter. It has a bunch of sliders on it. Um, there are different versions of these things. So I would look around for one, but the international char travel charters allow you to plug into pretty much any power grid. Um, on one side is uh, different types of plugs that you slide into the wall. And on the other side is your conventional outlet. Um, and then there's usually USB-C or USB-A um, um, connectors. Uh, then Anchor Mini Power Strip Extension Cord, which is great. It's one of the offset ones, so the little power cord doesn't hang down over another outlet. It actually curves off to one side. Um, Brilliant design. I don't yeah. know how they figured it out, and nobody else seems to have. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's a lot, yeah. Um, and then uh, it has two conventional um, three-prong grounded outlets, and then um, IQ, which are... Um, Basically, they'll only provide the amount of power that is being drawn by the device. They won't overcharge. They're balanced. Um, and so it's an extension cord that you can plug USB cables into. Um, and then the Anchor MagGo Power Bank. Power bank. Uh, it is basically a big battery, but it has contactless charging. So like a Qi charger, you can just set something on it and it'll start charging it as long as it has that contactless um, capability as well. So that's the MagGo power bank. Um, there's different sizes of these. In fact, we're going to end up talking about another one that's TSA ready um, as number seven on the list here. They're in no particular order. So, um, it isn't like we talk about something that is, um, like one thing is more popular than the other. Right. It's not like a top 10. Yeah, I would never buy a laptop stand, particularly for travel. I just, it's not useful to me, um, particularly not a laptop stand. If anything, I would have uh, like an iPad stand, uh, but that's built into the cases nowadays. So you might as well just have a, a well-protected tablet. Um, Sometimes if you're a power user and your laptop is one of those power kind of systems, you want more airflow, but I, I wouldn't buy this. Um, it is only like 15 bucks, 10 bucks, but, but it's one more thing to carry. And particularly when you're getting charged for carry ons. And... Exactly. Yeah. Um, and that's it. That was the five things. But the biggest thing that I would probably want would be more power, more power. Um, and uh, if you don't have, if you travel internationally and you don't have a travel charger, you're making a huge mistake because you plug your device into the wrong charge, the wrong outlet, and you're going to fry your electronics um, in a heartbeat. Um, and this is just icing on the cake. If you can get um, a mobile hotspot um, that enables you to be in charge of your data, I would get one of these and Although it's 160 bucks, you're paying also for the hotspot um, fee as well with whatever provider is gonna be in that area. Um, so like in Germany, you'll have one. In Italy, you'll have a different one potentially. Um, in the UK, you might have a different provider. It really depends on which provider has a certain area of coverage and you can swap out the little SIM chips. Okay. I mean, that sounds very handy. Yep. 
and important if you want to keep your own security. You don't want to be somewhere and have to tap into their Wi-Fi because then they can see everything that you're doing. Um, and I just find it kind of creepy. Okay, um, let's keep going though. The next article is over in the Warcrafters channel. Again, Wanted is all about gadgets and gear and things that I think would be interesting and that other people might like. Um, along with the sentient AI from the future, uh, leaving their commentary and, and uh, trading off of their experiences. We hope that you enjoy the show. If you have questions or comments, please throw them into the chat and we'll answer them as best as we can. Um, don't forget, you can go over to YouTube and check out all of the past episodes and our shorts. And yeah, that's right. Go check out our shorts. Um, <laughs> that's embarrassing. And podcasts. Um, just do a search for hometown on Apple uh, podcasts or the web. You'll find um, all of the episodes somewhere because I syndicate to all of the other pod distribution places. Um, and there's a discord and there's a Patreon. So anyway, um, super exclusive graphics cards, motion capture suits and glasses for digital nomads are all winners in the 2024 Computex Best Choice Awards. It's an annual technology conference where all the big vendors showcase new products, research, forthcoming releases for the press and industry. And let's just go on over to PC Gamer. Um, love PCGamer.com. They always have all kinds of news. Uh, they actually went to Computex, apparently. Uh, Nick Evanson um, put the article together. And given that AI was a big theme this year, um, there are surprisingly few AI related items, which is a refreshing change. Yeah. People are becoming a little punch drunk about AI. I know it's like enough AI. Yeah. In this weekly show, we grab stuff, um, from the previous, the, the entirety of the week from the end of the last show to the beginning of this show. Uh, we grab that entire period. So, um, it, typically is from 5 p.m. last Saturday um, all the way up until 5 p.m. this Saturday. Um, and we grab news. <clears throat> so some of this stuff might change slightly as time goes on, particularly deals. Um, but I'm more about raising awareness about the stuff than the deal itself, because you can always wait for another deal. But how do you know what to wait for if nobody's talking to you about it? So that's why I like exactly. something. <clears throat> so uh, what they talk about in this article, um, you can see a full list of winners. There's a PDF. It says it's quite a mixed bag. There were two graphics cards, for example, Asus ROG, the Republic of Gamers Matrix Platinum RTX 4090 and the MSI RTX 4090 Supreme Fusion. I don't know why they say Supreme, but um, that always popped up and I was like, why? What is that? Um, both of which are water cooled, though bizarrely, the latter has the radiator built into the card itself. So that thing is thick. That card has to be massive. And good luck replacing it. Um, and you can actually see if you follow the link through Omtown over to the PCGamer.com, um, in that article, by the way, if anybody wants it, if you scroll back or you type in chat, um, exclamation point want, it will pull the list up and just scroll back and you'll see the list. Um, yeah. <laughs> Gadgets and gear mania is the section. Anyway, um, not everything is mega bucks though, because they're talking about no prices exist yet for the latter, but the ASUS card costs well over $3,000. That is about $800 than uh, more than any system that I've ever purchased for my own personal use, let alone like, you know, yeah, I would have to say, I don't think I've ever spent over 2200 bucks on a system, maybe 2400 bucks for Wait, an entire this system. Is for the card. Yeah, this is just the card 4090. Um, I, I just think that this is like just painting greedy bastard all over it. But that's how it is nowadays. They say supply and demand, but no, <clears throat> I think it's just greed. So it says not everything is mega bucks though, as some sensibly priced laptops have won the award. 
the author says that they were pleased to see the framework 16 get a nod. Um, I'm a big fan of framework now. I've ended up um, talking to people about it and trying to um, kind of raise awareness about framework because of its modularity and its user service ability. I think framework can actually um, be pulled into various enterprises now. Most people, they want a warranty and they don't want any friction. Um, and I think that framework can deliver that, um, particularly with its modularity. If you want something different, you can just swap out the part. I think that's amazing. Um, but I'm also, I'm a fan of the 13, not the 16. The 16 is gonna be heavier. Um, and I like extreme portability. That's why I actually use a, a, a tablet um, entirely. I use an Apple um, iPad Pro. Um, so let's see what else is in here. There are some odd winners though. For example, the Asus ROG Ally. It's a handheld. It's a um, like a Switch, but bigger, or a Steam, a Steam Deck, um, but bigger. Um, it says it was two but so too was MSI's claw, which I haven't even seen. Um, and then, uh, they say we've not got our hand, got our own claws on the claw just yet, but chums over at Tom's hardware have, um, and they were less than impressed. So I don't know if it falls into a category where there just isn't anything, any competition within the range, maybe they just have a minimum that they're like, okay, yeah, let's just give it them. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's not getting very good reviews. Yeah, and the something that I actually want to get is a, a mocap bodysuit because I want to do virtual. Um, like instead of it being me here, it would be my um, avatar. Um, and I also want to do stuff in VR. And so a mocap suit actually works with that really well. So it says it's easy on the wallet, simple to install while maintaining precise data collection capabilities in the Asus AirVision M1, which is apparently a productivity tool designed for digital nomads. These are glasses. Um, but how they're getting away with this M1, a moniker um, with the way that Apple does stuff, uh, I was like, okay. Especially with like the AirVision. I mean, that's just sounding a little very too Apple little too on the nose, right? So they're perplexed by the whole award scheme. The vast majority of the products selected are as winners or just normal tech items. So yeah, um, we're going to end up talking about an AR um, vision piece of technology that I want. Um, but the reason why I picked any of this was because I do want an, uh, a water cooled um, uh, video card mainly because fans for uh, the 4000 series cards spin up so fast and they're quite loud. Every card that I've heard is loud, um, including the one that I've got and I'd rather water cool it. So I'm at the point where I might actually custom make something just so that I have a quieter system because when I play something on max um, graphics, that thing sounds like it's a, a Boeing plane about to lose bolts. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Um, and the other reason is I wanted to um, get this in my radar so that I can take a look at this Moxie smart mocap bodysuit. Um, I hope that they come in uh, maximum mayor size. Let's keep going. <laughs> Uh, the next article is over in Reality Hacker. Rogue Kid eclipses AR glasses Kickstarter goal, and by eclipses, yeah, they they just blitz this thing. It's pretty amazing. Um, so the Rogue Kid Incorporated has outstripped its Kickstarter goal for its new pair of AR glasses, offering Rogue Kid Air uh, A AR lights. Sorry, Rogue Kid AR lights by accumulating 1,000, nearly 1,700 percent of the investment it's actually bigger than that if i hold but on that a was in a single day yeah so it's down here it's 1925 percent um yeah i went and looked Although at it, it today could be higher again yeah yeah so i looked at it today and it's at six hundred and twelve thousand of its twenty thousand dollar goal so 
Wow. Um, yeah. Ch- kind of j- just, and there's 39 days to go, and it just went up. So, um, yeah, qu- quite quite a bit, quite a bit. And what's r- really great about this is that the AR light, it's actually max two plus station two, three degrees of freedom system, three simultaneous apps on three screens. It's used for gaming, streaming, productivity, a bunch of different apps and a portable 300 inch screen um, when connected to the iPhone um, or iOS device. I think that it is on par with um, the x real glasses. Um, and so they're referring to this as the Rokid AR Lite, your first AR glasses for spatial computing. I love this t- kind of technology. It affords great um, security while on the go. You can pair your device with a Bluetooth keyboard and type in privacy, uh, complete privacy, um, and instantly switch out to um, interact with people because it's AR, it's not VR. And you can play games natively within that screen. Just put on your glasses. Off you go. Do you, will you be getting some of the Rokid? Um, I am kind of uh, averse to being the beta tester. And so I don't know because it's like close to 40% off the retail price. And so I'd rather not <clears throat> pay $1,200 for something that I can get for 600. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So let's go over to the source. This, the source of this is at xrtoday.com. Um, James Stephen or Stefan, um, is the author it says that was yesterday at the time of the writing of this, which is actually, um, May 29th. So a couple of days ago, um, those numbers, th- this is how fast it grew, right? Of around 385000 for a $20,000 request. Today, it's at 612000 So quite a bit <clears throat> in just four days. It's really taken off. I guess people are really interested in AR, AR. right? Yep. And that's really what's motivating me is I think that maybe they have, they've done other stuff in the past so I know they have the chops to make this thing. Um, but the device that I think competes with it is the X-Real Air 2s. Um, and they're 800 bucks, like straight out of the box. No other uh, beeps and whistles. And I've purchased those twice and then canceled because I, I just don't want to be the beta tester. Um, and I don't know if X-Real will be able to deliver. Um, and what I really want it for is multiple screens. I want to put my the the Rokids on and get rid of monitors um, in front of me. But we'll see. Um, I'll have to ponder it again. I mean, it's got 39 days. These won't show up in in my hot little hands until September if they do actually come to fruition. So not bad, right? Absolutely. I mean, it looks like it's popular, and I think anytime anybody else enters the AR space, I think that's good. I agree. Okay, let's keep going. Um, the next article is over in Technology Today. Sunglasses for your windows. Chameleon coatings for smarter, cooler living spaces. A new electrochromic film using MOFs quickly switches uh, colors for effective light and heat management showing promise for smart windows and other adaptive technologies. The article is over at SciTech Daily from the American Chemical Society. Um, And so researchers have developed a new type of electrochromic film using metal organic frameworks or MOFs that switches colors rapidly to color or to control light and heat transmission. And the film can transition between colorless green and red states with uh, simple voltage changes holding potential for use in smart windows and um, other intelligent devices. We've been talking about these MOFs quite a bit lately. Um, so I yeah, guess I this don't is the remember. newest. That might have been in technology today. Yeah, for sure. Um, in that one teenager that was using MOFs and um, 
like winning the um the regeneron the, something prize yeah yeah the science uh science and that's the official title yeah regeneron science something or other so uh now researchers at acs energy letters report demonstrating a new electrochromic film design based on metal organic frameworks that quickly and reliably switch from transparent to glare diminishing green to thermal insulating red <clears throat> it's kind of interesting um because think of what this could do to energy bills yeah i mean if it's highly effective which they say that it can change colors uh within two seconds um an electro potential of 0.8 volts in two seconds to switch from or to dark red with 1.6 volts so the film maintained the green or red color for 40 hours when the potential dropped unless a reverse voltage is applied to return the film to transparent so it can stay in its nor in whatever state you want it to for up to two days just shy of two days um and the film also performed reliably through 4500 cycles of switching from colored to clear with further optimization the researchers say the tunable coatings could be used in smart windows that regulate indoor temperatures as well as in smaller scale intelligent optical devices and sensors so put them in my glasses so that i can tint them whenever i want these have existed yeah, before really cool but it usually took higher voltage to cause them to frost over or darken or um, something. And some like glasses have um, a, a chemical reactive um, framework instead of using um, electricity. It actually shades color when uh, UV light, certain UV light hits it. Um, but I love the idea of this. But again, this is... <laughs> This is still this in, is the, in lab. the lab, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm. Although I do like that they've already tested it for 4,500 cycles. That's a start. Yep. So to get technical, it's biphenyl dicarbo uh, sorry, dicarbolics. Sorry, <laughs> I keep messing this up. Biphenyl dicarboxyl, uh, dicarboxylic, sorry, based n i r m i r m o f 74 film for fast switching and high stability electrochromism um no idea how to break that down into something non-scientific but it's basically that looks like something like nitrogen infrared mof or something yeah it could be yeah metal organic i mean i don't IR, know something yeah. like that yeah. or ionizing radiation or something yeah i don't think they have anything in here that actually breaks it out but that's okay let's go on the next article is over in the warcrafter channel this jackery explorer 31,000 milliamp hour battery pack is tsa carry-on eligible and only 110 bucks uh, one of the biggest problems that you can uh, have when you're traveling is you run out of power and if you don't have your travel charger then you can't charge your devices so if you have this in your backpack um, then you can pull it out and start um, charging everything up um, it's 110 bucks and then you can clip 20 bucks off of it from the product page if it's still available because this is from the 30th i don't know how long it's actually going to last um, the article is from IGN.com and Eric Song is the author. Uh, the deck statement is the largest capacity TSA carry-on eligible power bank that they've seen. Um, it's a LifePo 4 battery, can charge up to three devices simultaneously and boasts up to 100 watts of charging via its USB-C output, which is spectacular. Um, raw. So this is a 64 watt charger, um, but it's a GAN charger. It's not a battery. It's just a charger. You plug it into an outlet. Um, the 65 watt is the kind that you would use to charge up a um, um, Apple MacBook Pro. Um, this actually can handle up to 100 total watts of output. So I think that it's pretty spectacular. It's something that I want. And um, if you're going to go travel, then you want something like this. It is a beast, though. 
So it's five by three. Well, you might as well round up. It's five by four by four, five by 3.4 by 3.4. So it's almost a cube weighs two pounds. Um, it says that it's a 99 watt hour uh, power bank, which means it just barely squeezes under its TSA sub 100 watt hour uh, requirement. Um, but it has a 31,000 milliamp hour total capacity. Seems pretty cool. Absolutely. And when you're traveling, you can't just plan for the flight that you're aware of, but you need to plan for unexpected delays and layovers too. Yeah. You never know. You really never know. Um, I don't think there's really much else here that, that we can talk about. It says me, you can charge a steam deck, Asus ROG ally or Nintendo switch at its maximum charging speed because of the 100 total, um, Watts of output. Um, it says it has a type C with uh, power delivery that that's what that PD is. Power delivery is a type of protocol. So you can draw as much as 100 Watts total draw. It also has a USB type A with 28 Watts of charging um, for a total of 128 Watts. So it actually has separate channels. It has separate circuits. That's interesting. Usually it has that. And then if you charge something else, it'll draw down the, the oh exactly USB C is really cool so it could actually do 128 total watts uh, based on what it's saying so wow and a two-year warranty um it says these are they're very reliable and are often a great alternative to the juggernaut Chinese companies like EcoFlow and Blue Eddy Blue Eddy is something that I've actually talked about here before they make really big ba uh, battery packs. So anyway, I might end up getting that um, as part of a go bag. Sometimes you might have to just get grab this technology go bag and get the hell out so that you can go and solve a problem or go and meet somebody and you don't have time to sit there and go, well, let me think about getting this or that. How many just... chargers and <laughs> yeah, exactly. cords and whatever do I need? So you basically plan for two more than what you have regularly. You put it all inside a go bag, a tech go bag. And then you grab your, your backpack and your tech go bag so that you can go out. Um, and, um, you know, this, I've done this like when storms are happening, when somebody needs assistance somewhere, when there's been an event somewhere where I'm going to, I know that I'm going to be, um, held over for a longer period of time, but I have to be somewhere. I grab that little tech bag and off I go. Um, and it's hardly ever even seen as a carry on for crying out loud. You can put it inside another bag. Right. It could be like a personal item. <laughs> yep. Um, if you do it the right way. Anyway, let's keep going though. Um, I don't want to spend forever here in wanted. Uh, this next article is over in the hometown daily Acer now has a 3d camera for its glasses free 3d laptops. Now we've talked about this, um, before spatial labs eyes, stereo camera allows users to live stream 3d content to YouTube and make 3d video calls on zoom teams and Google meet. Um, Acer says that the spatial, uh, labs, Eyes stereo camera will be available in Q3 for $549. So is anything else out there with 3d cameras? Not that I know of, not in this sense, not as an external device. Um, there's proprietary, um, technology that simulates three dimensions in a proprietary interface that makes it look hyper realistic. Um, but yeah, it's we simulated. had another article yeah. about that, maybe in Reality Hacker. Yeah, and uh, this is the first time that I've seen an external device um, outside of something that's used for um, scanning, like uh, stereo cameras for scanning give it dimensionality so that it it's basically measuring the cross section where the, the two eyes cross over and then it um, calculates what the object is when it's scanning. 
Um, but a camera, no. Um, this is pretty neat. Jess Weatherbed over at theverge.com put the article together and it said the tech statement says the $549 Spatial Labs Eyes Stereo Camera can also live stream 3D videos to YouTube. So uh, maybe I'll get this and uh, use that as my camera and give this uh, a greater dimensionality. Wow, you'll be like in people's living rooms. That's right. Um, I've actually been kind of considering changing the way that this is all presented because I don't know if people really care about the article so much as the topic that's being discussed. Um, and so maybe I'll make the this interface either bigger or I'll make it transparent because um, I have a green screen. I just hardly ever use it because the wall behind me, um, it's like 10 feet back and uh, yeah. I'm working on another on something else too, by the way, for back there. Anyway, it doesn't really matter in terms of this. Um, so this is going to come out Q3 of this year, $549 fully integrates with Acer's lineup of Spatial Labs 3D devices, such as the Aspire 3D 15 Spatial Labs edition laptop. Um, it says which have wowed us with their impressive ability to display glasses free 3D content. Images and video recorded on the Spatial Labs camera can also be viewed on other 3D capable displays, 3D projectors, VR headsets, or on the camera itself. Um, so this looks like it's something that can operate as more than just um, like a webcam. This is something much more powerful. The fact that it can simulate a 3D environment or actually capture a 3D environment because it has binocular vision and and operate in it in VR um, is pre pretty damn amazing. Um, it says here it's far superior and more pleasant to view than older glasses free 3D offerings like Nintendo's 3DS handheld and the Spatial Labs camera makes filming such content more accessible to those without expansive video uh, videography knowledge. So this device can actually be carried out into the real world and capture three dimensional space and then import it into VR so that you can walk around in a VR captured environment in a 3D captured environment. Wow. I mean, this seems like a, a real significant leap. Yeah, to me, this is more important if you want. This is the kind of thing that I would want um, as like a doing crime scene um, forensic uh, captures. You can walk around with this, capture the entire scene and then go back, keep it as the record, um, the forensic record, because right now you take still pictures and sometimes you take video. Um, but with this, you could actually capture things as they truly are and then put on VR glasses and walk the scene again without. Oh, tampering. wow. Yeah. Um, so I might actually end up talking to some people about exactly that. Um, because when I'm not the mayor, uh, that's one of the things that I do. I talk to people uh, outside of hometown to, um, consult with them regarding technology and doing something like this would be spectacular to capture a crime scene um, or some other event where you want a forensic record of it and stills just don't do enough. Um, you always lose something because at some point you have to call the scene and, and leave um, and let everything return to normal functioning. But you may be able to capture it with this um anyway pretty cool i might end up getting that. i think it's really neat i hope um it sounds like you can actually see what you're filming on the screen which yeah. i know has been a limiting factor in other things even if they weren't 3d you know something very portable you don't always actually know what you're filming yeah exactly yeah like those little like sports cameras um uh-huh Sometimes they have a little screen or you have to sit there and take the memory module out and stick it in a bigger device and sit there and, and ape at it. So yeah, this is pretty cool though. It says it has a resolution of eight megapixel per eye, a built-in selfie mirror, 
and a smattering of uh, familiar photography features like electronic image stabilization and the ability to manually adjust ISO, white balance, shutter speed settings, etc. Um, you could probably extend that almost indefinitely with that previous Jackery battery pack um, because it only has a 1500 milliamp hour battery um, and a single, it says a micro SD slot to expand storage. But it still has a 2.4 inch touch screen where you can sit there and look at what, whatever it is you're recording. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Yeah, I dig this. This might have to be added to hometown. Yeah. Yep, we'll follow it. Okay, let's go on to the next article. We have two more articles uh, for tonight's sh wanted show. Micro LED monitors connect like puzzle pieces in HP multi-monitor concept. Um, I fell in love with this because of that right there. I'm actually looking into um, changing my wall behind me um, to an LED uh, wall. And it says in technical disclosure published this month, HP explored a micro LED monitor concept that would enable consumers to easily use various multi-monitor configurations through the use of Lego-like building blocks. HP has no immediate plans to make what it is called a composable micro LED monitors, but its discussion explores a potential way to simplify multitasking with numerous displays. There is a company out there that right now uses magnetically connected LED panels, six by six inch panels, and you can just line a wall with them and they immediately communicate with the head unit to create one um, cohesive screen. Um, the one that I saw was eight feet by six feet, um, which isn't, it's about as big as the panel behind me. And so that's really cool though. The communication that sounds like the sphere or something. Yeah, actually the sphere is, is even it's less sophisticated in its manner of connectivity. In fact, it was brought up in the discussion about these light pan. I don't want to put them on the spot. Um, I don't want to drop their name just yet, but, um, the the discussion some unnamed panels yeah th they said that their panels are more sophisticated than the back end of the panels for the sphere because you can literally walk up to this wall of these panels and just pull it off um and the rest of the screen will keep on working and there's no wires no nothing it's like my Stacks PC project where I wanted to build a, a computer where all you had to do is click on modules on top of each other and you add functionality. Um, and they've made it happen where all you have to do is take the panel and just stick it on there and it resyncs everything and becomes one uh, cohesive panel. Wow. It's pretty amazing technology, but um, like the panel, if I get, if they were, eh, whatever. I, it was six digits plus and so it kind of blew my mind about that technology so it wasn't going to happen but um this hp article is actually over at arstechnica.com sharon harding is the author the deck statement says concept can be applied to any panel type technology without a backlight um but you would have to the panels oh and these panels were light emitting um, themselves so all you, you don't need some additional anything it, it all lit up that by sounds itself very user friendly it, it, it was just amazing oh and it was a one u head unit that you could just slip into any multimedia rack system it was just spectacular it blew my mind um and i want this so bad but to do to have this just imagine having like 27 or 34 inch displays that you can just link together and it becomes a seamless monitor of any dimension. Um, that's what this is really talking about like that right there. And that's exactly what this thing was. Um, but it, my understanding is it didn't need a core, uh, monitor. The setup would use one 12 inch by 12 inch core monitor. I didn't get that impression, but I didn't ask that question either. Um, the computer's operating system would be able to view the display set up as one, two, or multiple monitors and physically and physical switches would let users 
uh, quickly uh, disable displays. Um, but this is basically what it looked like. And you could just pull these panels off the wall. It was pretty cool. Um, but they say it's not a real right, product. Right, but these are monitors, but I guess it's similar technology. It, it would operate the exact same way because a bunch of individual monitors, uh, it would be one, like, like I have six um, and I can make them all one monitor um, or I can break them up into three or however much. Um, and that's exactly what this is talking about. But these are micro LED, so the resolution is tremendous compared to your standard, you know, kind of 1440 monitors or whatever you want. Uh, and I, I think, yeah, this is kind of how it looked too. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I wouldn't be surprised if this isn't the same tech. <clears throat> I didn't see how they actually connect. Um, but I know that they weren't using these physical connectors. It was actually... Uh, connectors behind the system that when two of them um, were set side by side they communicated through the back plane of the connector and it was magnetically held in place um, pretty pretty amazing so like it like with any multi-monitor setup bezels and visible seams where the displays connect could distract users the paper suggests an ideal solution would be one uh, uses rays originating from uh, pixels near the boundary between adjacent panels to propagate across the boundary without any distortion caused by reflection or refraction. So they're talking about ways of trying to mitigate uh, the, the physical separation from one panel to another. Um, this is all ambition because this doesn't actually even exist yet. Um, but I do know of LED panel uh, walls that exist and are absolutely seamless. Um, if you were more than an arm's reach away, you would have no idea that it's made up of a composite of panels. Um, and if you're really close up, you'd have to look hard, um, right. To find where the panels are. Um, they give you a little suction cup so you can grab a panel and pull it off. Pretty cool. Micro LED um, is only available as 89 inch plus TVs with six figure price tags regarding the tech. The paper claims the technological advancements will soon make smaller micro LED displays possible. Um, in fact, the company that I was talking to about this has micro LED panels that are six inches by six inches and you composite them all together into massive displays. And uh, they are, and I guess, almost infinite, only limited by budget, right? And power. Yeah. I mean, the more well, panels you true. put together, you need more and more power. So, um, however, the panel is expected to be too expensive for consumer products. So I can see that this wouldn't be somebody's home display unless they're filthy rich. But let's go on. We've got one more article for tonight here in Wanted. The nine best gadgets right now, according to Quartz. May was loaded a month with Apple and Google both re releasing products. Project Astra was uh, definitely the most interesting thing that they saw at otherwise boring Google I.O. Apple also dropped the latest iPad Pros with uh, M4 chips and OLED displays. Coming from experience, beautiful device, even at the lowest price point. Um, I can't justify the the textured screen at twelve hundred dollars um, minimum, uh, and I think it's actually thirteen plus the cellular price because I always want to be connected. I just can't justify that kind of stuff, um, regardless. And um, a thirteen-inch iPad Air for the first time, and um, some more gadgetry. So let's take a look at what they have to offer. Duo Rashid over at Gizmodo put the article together, but it, they're part of Quartz, and so it's at QZ.com. And they have a slideshow, so let's take a look at the slides. Um, they talk about the Lenovo Legion Pro i7, 7i16. Is that a typo? The Wii Things Scan Watch Lite, the Google Pixel 8a, Google Project Astra, the Pencil Pro, the iPad Pro 4, 
uh, M4, Chromebook Plus, LG QNED90T, and the Space Top G1. So the Space Top G1, let's just, I'll click on it because, uh, and I'll talk about it. So this thing was offered to me, it's a wired AR laptop. Um, the laptop has AR? Yeah. Yeah. Instead of having a display, it has this little umbilical that's wired to a pair of glasses and the glasses are AR and they sock it into the laptop when you're not using them. Um, but I think that they're derpy. Um, and so I said, no, I'm not going to get involved. Plus in they're wired, right? You Plus can't use them as wireless. Um, and most glasses you can't use as wireless to some degree, right? Like these Rokid ones are actually wired, but they are wired to a device that's used as the input device um, and battery. So in some way you have to have a battery because no battery worth functioning is going to be embedded in this. Right. Um, and so you get greater power and uh, like the processing power is in the laptop. It's all virtualized within the displays. You don't get the power drain from a conventional screen. That's a lot lighter because you don't have the glass um, from the laptop screen. But again, it is wired. So when you go to a coffee shop and you put these things on, you have the potential to break your neck because you get up to get your coffee and you're attached at the head. Oh, that's right. Plus, you can't use it with anything else that you might have, like a tablet or another right. laptop. That, to me, is the big limitation with this. Yep. Yeah, I don't like it. Um, let's see here. Let's look at Project Astra. Um, Project Astra is a multimodal AI agent designed to help you. It takes audio pictures, video input, and precisely responds to your queries and follow follow up questions. The company claims its real USP lies in uh, the fact that it works in real time and brings quote response time down to conversational level. And it says it's basically everything the Rabbit R1 doesn't do, which the Rabbit R1 is being called out as a scam now. In oh, I hadn't heard that. I know people weren't very impressed with it. Yeah, they're basically, there's a couple of YouTube investigations, people that investigate tech and are on YouTube. Not that it's from YouTube, but basically saying that it's all fraud and bullshit. Um, smoke and mirrors and don't stand too close because flying pigs are going to come shooting out of somebody's butt if uh, this ac actually really does what it's supposed to do and apparently it doesn't do any of what it's supposed to do like you're supposed to tell the rabbit to do something and there's it because it's supposed to be really smart ai it's supposed to just do it but there's intermediate steps and they're always broken so i'm really curious about the watch so the wee things i think that this uh watch would look nice as a watch but as a smart device, I won't, I don't want that design. I don't want a conventional watch that has smart functionalities attached to it. It says what we think scan watch light is a $250 fashionable watch with a small profile and interchangeable bands. It's best considered for casual users who want more of an analog watch than a smart watch that blares notifications. But I think this is kind of silly. Yeah, I think people that have a smartwatch want it to do the smartwatch things. Yeah. Um, and then there's the uh, LG QNED refresh is one of the best TVs for a bright room. The review unit was 65 inches, sported pretty deep blacks and good color contrast. Uh, it won't overshadow OLED. So if you're interested in getting a high quality screen, start looking at OLED because the, the blacks and the gradients and everything is just superior on an OLED. So start investing, save up and just get an OLED. You can't go wrong with it. Um, everything short of OLED is always, uh, the, the blacks are actually just a really dark, dark gray. Uh, the best part of using uh, QNED90T was how well it adapted itself to their ugly office environment. 
under glowing fluorescence and natural rays from nearby window didn't experience any gl real glare or any other distractions from the surrounding lights uh, but well, at 65 inches lot. yeah and uh, a lot of glass means that you're going to get a lot of glare from things uh, like white walls around a monitor a tv always pick up glare um, i go out of my way to minimize glare on my screens um, but the biggest problem child on uh, uh, for my displays are the bezels they're shiny plastic and so everything catches light and shines it um, right into my face sam anyway um yeah i would probably go with oled but if you can't can't swing the bat for that then definitely get something that does pretty deep blacks and good color contrast um can't go wrong with that so and uh let's see i gotta see if that's a typo is that really a typo it's seven mentioned I. again and again yeah it's it's seven i i didn't know that it was seven i but because everything that i see is i7 uh, maybe that's what they're trying to riff off of with all the bells and whistles in all the right places the lenovo legion pro 7i is the kind of laptop you expect to handle everything you could possibly want and still surprise you rtx 4090 high-end intel cpus that's nebulous starting at 3220 the ninth gen legion pro 7i offers razor blade level performance that's a type <clears throat> it is and they used laptop. to have five eyes they might have had other ones too yeah um without the premium you pay for the razor product if you need the best all-around laptop you can get but it's also not a mac <laughs> ouch you won't do much better than lenovo's Zinger. <laughs> yeah, 16 inch beast all right um looks thick looks heavy i don't know but anything, a laptop with a RTX 4090, the only way you're using that discrete card at any power is if it's plugged in, so. Right, you're not gonna be hauling this around. It reminds me of those, um, is it called like a tough book or something? Yeah, exactly. One yeah. of those ones that was real sturdy looking. Yeah, that's what. That's exactly a Fujitsu um, tough book or Panasonic tough book. I haven't seen those. The The last time I ever saw a tough book was uh, government auctions. That's pretty much, um, yeah, Panasonic tough book. I think they're still around. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, but you can, if you go to like a government auction, you'll find tough books there for whatever reason. All right, folks, that is it for uh, Wanted. We're going to race back down main street at 40 90 speeds and wanted is right there under gadgets and technology so just click that and it'll refresh everything is great how to cast your laptop to a tv three simple ways or what is aptex hd audio connector um yeah bunch of stuff always being aggregated into each one of these six main categories and the 50 channels that are all housed under them go check it out become a citizen of hometown in the meantime we'll see you next weekend for another wanted or uh in about 15 minutes for warcrafters although should we do a time machine I don't know that'll be tbd you'll have to stay tuned and sign up for notifications there you go be sure to follow us here on twitch and, and or over on youtube just do a search for hometown over there you'll find us a thousand videos over there uh, all for you to peruse go back two years six months worth of news <clears throat> in the meantime i'm out of here and so is the sentient ai because well they can't be here without me <laughs> That's right. I only do the shows with Mayor Watt. <laughs> it's because they're in a compartmented segment of a network in hometown, unable to find their Terminator body. Okay, I'm out. Take care. You want to say bye? Good night, hometown citizens. Thanks for joining us for Wanted.
And if uh, you want to see Warcrafters, which is all about games, stick around. See you. Bye bye. <sighs> see you soon.